501. I'm going to do a couple of questions out of section 7. This is on orthogonal transformations, basically reflections and rotations. So this particular question is a slightly harder one, but quite a, an interesting one and it, it has lots of nice ideas in it which are quite useful. So the, we start off with a, with a line L in the two-dimensional space in R2, and it makes an angle alpha with the positive uh, x-axis. We take a linear map T, which maps R2 to R2, and what it does is it takes this vector x, and it's going to reflect it about the line and end up at the point T of x. So it's going to be a reflection. I'm going to take u in the question we're told is a unit vector that lies on L and v is a vector, a unit vector perpendicular to L. And so the first part is I'm going to write down, I'm going to find these two vectors u and v and then we're going to try and get a matrix representation for this linear map T but with respect to the basis uv. So let me firstly start by writing down the vector u. So u is a unit vector. So there's my unit vector along there. Makes an angle alpha and along the line L. So some basic trig shows you that this point here is going to be cos alpha and that up there will be sine alpha. And so I can take the vector u then to be cos alpha and sine alpha. So that will be a vector which is a unit vector, it's got length 1, you can tell cos squared plus i squared is 1, and it's going to lie on L. So I'm going to put u equal to that. Now I want v to be a unit vector perpendicular to L, so that simply means its dot product with that has to be 0, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, a sine alpha perhaps and a minus cos alpha there. doesn't matter which way we're going to do it. I'll just check that I'm being consistent. In fact, I'm going to put the minus up the top. It doesn't matter. You can put the minus either one. So these dot product to give you zero, and again you can check this is a unit vector. So there's my u and v. So now I'm going to take a basis. These vectors are, are linearly independent, and they're going to form a basis for r squared. So take a basis for r squared to be u and v. And I can then try, I can then write down what the matrix representation for this linear map T is with respect to this basis. So with respect to this basis, the matrix for T is, well, we just use our common sense on this one. So what do I do? I need to take my basis vectors and I need to map them. Well, if I've got a vector that's lying on L and I reflect it about L, nothing happens. So that means, um, I'll put the matrix here in a minute, and then, so if I work out T of U, then I just get 1 times U. By the way, you should be thinking also that this is an eigen uh, vector with eigenvalue 1. So, the coordinates of this with respect to this basis are 1 and 0. I build this one from this basis by taking one of those and none of those. And the coordinates then become the column of the matrix. And T of V, well now think about what happens to V. V is a vector that's perpendicular to the line. And so when I reflect it about the line, I'm going to end up down here. And that will be minus V. So V is going to get mapped to minus 1 times V. And by the way, again, you should be thinking that means V is an eigenvector, and there's the eigenvalue. Now I've got to build this one from this basis. So how do I do that? Well, I want none of those and minus one of those. So there's the matrix. I'll give that a name and call that M. And there's a matrix representation with respect to this basis. Now this is, a, in some sense, a kind of unnatural basis because you normally like things with respect to the standard basis. So I'd like to be able to get a matrix representation for this linear map, but now with respect to the standard basis. And to do that, we're going to need to use our change of basis ideas that we learnt in one of the earlier chapters. 
So here's our matrix M, which was the linear, um, which represents the linear map that did the reflection with respect to the basis um, UV both sides. So here is my matrix 1, 0, 0, minus 1. So we know what the matrix representation for T is with respect to these funny bases and we need to work out what the matrix is going to be now with respect to the standard bases. So remember our U and V, this one was cos theta sine theta and this one we made minus sine theta cos theta. So we're going to use our commutative diagram idea. So to get the matrix with respect to the standard basis, I'm going to take a detour. In fact, I'm going to go down here, across there, and then back up to there again. So the matrix across here is going to be go down here under the identity map, which doesn't do anything, then across here, and then up here. So again, under the identity map. So I need to get the matrix that sends me from here down to here and from there up to there with respect to the identity map. You can see that these, are, whatever these are, these are going to be inverses of each other. Now it's always easier to map into the space where the image is, the, the, the basis vectors are the standard basis vectors. So I'm going to write down this matrix here firstly. So the matrix here I'll call P. So what do I do? I take the basis vector down here, U, U maps to itself, I get its coordinates with respect to this basis, well that's easy, it's just itself. And then similarly, that one maps to itself under the identity mapping, its coordinates with respect to this basis are minus sine theta cos theta. So there's the matrix P. This one is going to be the exact opposite, well it's going to be the inverse of it because I'm going under the identity map but this time I'm going from the standard basis to this funny basis. So I chase through the commutative diagram as we've done in earlier chapters, so M dash then the matrix across here, I go down here so I apply P inverse first then I apply M, that's going to be on the left and then I apply P up this way so I simply write down what the product of all these are. So this is the matrix cos theta minus sine theta. This is sine theta cos theta. This is the matrix 1, 0, 0, minus 1. And the inverse of this matrix is easy to get. You, the determinant, by the way, is 1. And you interchange those two so nothing happens and you change the sign of the other one. Now, when you multiply this out, which I'll just squeeze in here, I'll leave you to check when you multiply this out, you in fact end up with cos 2 theta sine 2 theta minus, uh, no, sorry, sine 2 theta and minus cos 2 theta. Uh, so, in fact, in the earlier part of the question, I, I had the angle alpha and I chose it to theta here, which was unfortunate of me. So, uh, all you're going to do is to answer the question properly, you're going to re replace all my thetas with an alpha and that will answer, answer the, the question.